I work in a hotel for otherworldly guests. Here are some of my experiences. As a hotel clerk, I have seen my fair share of strange guests come and go. But the residents of this hotel in particular are on a whole different level. I thought I was just imagining things at first. The eerie whispers and footsteps that I would hear in the empty corridors at night. The way the customers would disappear for days on end, only to reappear as if nothing had happened. The way the air seemed to chill whenever I went into certain rooms. But then I started to notice the little details. The way guests would avoid making eye contact with me, as if they were hiding something. The strange symbols and markings etched into the walls and furniture. The way the hotel seemed to shift and change when I wasn't looking. I knew I had to get out of there, but I couldn't bring myself to leave. I was drawn to the hotel, to its secrets and its mysteries. I had to know what was really going on, even if it meant risking my own sanity. I could have left, but I didn't. A strong curiosity kept me here. And I've worked long enough to have some pretty wild stories. Now I'm ready to share some of my story. But be warned, once you start listening, there's no turning back. You'll be drawn into the darkness just like I was, and you'll never be able to forget what you find within these walls. I'm kidding. Enjoy. When I started working here, I didn't know what to expect. I was never briefed above surface level instructions. Dealing with the guests was my number one priority, so I sat front and center to anyone who walked in. One time when I was still relatively new, as I stood behind the reception desk, I heard a soft knock on the door. I looked up and saw a tall, thin man standing in the doorway. He was pale, with dark circles under his eyes and a faint sheen of sweat on his forehead. He looked like he hadn't slept in days. Can I help you? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. The man's lips curved into a faint smile. I'm looking for a room, he said. His voice was low and raspy, like he hadn't used it in a long time. I hesitated for a moment. There was something about this man that made me uneasy. But I couldn't just turn him away. After all, that's what I was here for. Of course, I said, forcing a smile. We have a few rooms available. Do you have a reservation? The man shook his head. No, I just need a place to rest for a few days. I've been traveling for a long time. I raised an eyebrow. It was unusual for someone to just show up without a reservation, especially at this time of night. But I didn't want to pry. I didn't want to know any more about this man than I had to. That's no problem, I said, grabbing a key from the drawer. We have a nice room on the third floor. It's quiet and private. The man nodded, his eyes gleaming in the dim light. That will do just fine, he said. I handed him the key and watched as he turned to leave. Enjoy your stay, I called out, but he didn't respond. He just disappeared down the hallway, leaving me alone with my thoughts. For the rest of the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every time I looked up, I expected to see the pale man standing in the doorway, staring at me with those dark, empty eyes. But he never came back. The next morning, I heard a commotion coming from the third floor. I rushed upstairs to find the room the man had rented the night before, but it was empty. The bed was made, the curtains were drawn, and there was no sign that anyone had ever been there. I searched the rest of the hotel, but the man was nowhere to be found. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. I knew then that I wasn't dealing with a normal guest. I was dealing with something much more sinister. Another time, as I was making my rounds, I heard a strange scratching noise coming from one of the rooms. I knocked on the door, but there was no answer. I tried the handle, but it was locked. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of what to do. The scratching noise was getting louder, and I could hear a faint hissing sound coming from inside the room. It sounded like something was trying to escape. I took a deep breath and pushed open the door, bracing myself for whatever was on the other side. But what I saw was beyond anything I could have imagined. There, on the ceiling, was a creature that looked like a cross between a spider and a human. It had long, spindly legs and a pair of glowing red eyes that stared down at me. I stood frozen in shock, unable to move or speak. The creature hissed and lunged at me, its sharp claws scraping against the ceiling as it moved. I managed to snap out of my trance and ran out of the room, slamming the door shut behind me. I could hear the creature pounding on the other side, but I didn't look back. I just kept running until I reached the safety of the reception desk. From that day on, I avoided that room at all costs. I didn't want to know what other horrors were lurking within its walls. 
I just focused on my job and tried to forget about the strange guest that called that room home. There was one particular guest who always made me uncomfortable. Every time he checked in, he would try to lure me into his room with promises of untold riches or secrets of the universe. But I always declined, knowing that there was something sinister lurking behind his charming facade. He was a tall, handsome man with a smooth voice and a magnetic presence. But there was something off about him. His eyes were cold and empty, and there was a darkness that seemed to radiate from his very being. Despite my reservations, I couldn't help but be drawn to him. There was something intoxicating about his presence, and I found myself drawn to his room time and time again. But each time I approached his door, I would hear a voice in my head warning me to turn back. And each time, I would listen to that voice and retreat, leaving the man alone in his room. I knew that I had to stay away from him, no matter how tempting his offers may have been. I couldn't allow myself to be drawn into his dark world. I had to stay strong and resist his charms, no matter what the cost. After a while of working here though, I started getting used to my strange customers. I learned to keep to myself for the most part, and that no one could help me if I was ever caught out. I wasn't always alone though. Besides the other staff, there was once a second hire to help out at the front desk. He was a young man named Daniel. He was bright and ambitious, and I could tell that he was destined for great things. But unfortunately, he wasn't as careful as I was. One night, Daniel was making his rounds when he was caught by one of the guests. It was a succubus, a creature that feeds on the life force of humans. It had been disguised as a beautiful woman, and it used its charms and seductive powers to lure Daniel into its room. The succubus played mind games with Daniel, making him believe that he was in control of the situation. It told him that he was special, that he was the only one who could understand its true nature. And Daniel, flattered and entranced, was unable to resist its charms. I can imagine that if I dealt with it first, I would have most likely fallen for the same thing. Let's just say it was very persuasive. As soon as Daniel entered the room, the succubus revealed its true form. The creature was a terrifying sight to behold. It was slender, with long claws and dark red eyes. Its skin was pale and clammy, and its mouth was filled with horrific teeth. I don't know exactly what happened, but I heard Daniel screaming for help from one of the rooms. I ran to see what was going on but by the time I got there, it was too late. Daniel was lying on the floor, his body twisted and broken. The place was in shambles, as if a natural disaster had been entirely located in that room. And the succubus was nowhere to be found. When I asked management about what had happened, they told me that Daniel didn't exist. They said that I must have been imagining things, that the scream I heard was just in my head. But I knew the truth. I knew that Daniel had been real and that he had suffered a terrible fate at the hands of one of the strange guests. I couldn't help but feel guilty about what had happened to Daniel. If only I had been there to help him, maybe things would have turned out differently. But it was too late now. All I could do was learn from his mistake and be more careful in the future. One of the guests at our hotel is a strange and unsettling creature that reminds me of something out of a Lovecraft story. It has an elongated and exaggerated body and many writhing tentacles that seem to blur in formless ways like a Nora, and it moves in a way that is both graceful and terrifying. Despite its fearsome appearance, the creature is actually quite harmless. It is a bit of a prankster, and it loves to mess with people's senses. It can change its shape and size at will, and it can make itself invisible or even appear as something else entirely. I have had several encounters with the creature, and each time it has left me feeling disoriented and confused. It has the ability to manipulate my perception of reality and time, and it can make me see and hear things that aren't really there. It is like a living hallucination, and it is both fascinating and unsettling. Despite its strange and terrifying powers, the creature is actually quite timid and shy. It is rarely seen by anyone other than the staff, and it is usually content to stay in its own room. It only comes out to play when it is feeling particularly mischievous, and it usually disappears as quickly as it appears. Despite its unusual and unsettling nature, I have come to see the creature more as an annoyance than a threat. It is not aggressive or dangerous, and it rarely causes any real harm. It is more of a nuisance than anything else, and I have learned to ignore it and go about my business. But even though the creature is not a threat, I can't help but feel a sense of unease whenever it is near. Its presence is unsettling and disorienting, and it reminds me of the vast and unknowable horrors that lurk beyond our understanding. It may be harmless but it is also a reminder of the darkness that lies at the heart of the strange hotel. 
and I sometimes question its motivations when it's pulling one of its pranks, and wonder what it's doing while the staff are disoriented. Something I learned was that I had to deal with the strange and often inexplicable rules put in place by management. They were a mysterious group, always shrouded in secrecy and never seen in person. The memos were faxed in by an ancient-looking machine that never seemed to need filling, and always worked perfectly. An anomaly in and of itself if you know what dealing with printers and such are like. One of the most puzzling rules was that we were not allowed to ask any questions about the guests. If a guest requested something strange or unusual, we were to fulfill their request without hesitation or curiosity. It was as if management didn't want us to know anything about the guests or their true nature. Another rule was that we were not allowed to enter certain rooms, even if they were unoccupied. These rooms were always marked with a red sticker on the door, and we were warned that severe consequences would befall anyone who dared to enter them. But despite these strange rules, I continued to work at the hotel, drawn by the strange and supernatural occurrences that happened there. I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and wonder at the thought of encountering one of the guests and experiencing their otherworldly powers firsthand. And yet, I knew that I had to be careful. I had seen what had happened to Daniel, and I didn't want to suffer the same fate. I had to be vigilant and always on my guard, lest I become the next victim of the guests that temporarily called this hotel home. Despite the challenges and dangers of working at the strange hotel, I have had many pleasant experiences with the guests that frequent this place. Some of them are fun and friendly, and they make my job enjoyable and rewarding. One of my favorite guests is a mischievous fairy who loves to play pranks on the other guests and the staff. She is always getting into trouble, but she is so charming and cute that it is impossible to stay mad at her. She has a knack for making people smile, and she always brightens my day when she comes to the front desk. I remember one time when she snuck into the kitchen and spiked the chef's coffee with a potion that made him dance uncontrollably. It was hilarious to watch, and even the chef couldn't help but laugh. But then she got into trouble with my manager, and I had to help her apologize and make amends. Another guest that I enjoy interacting with is a ghost who haunts one of the rooms. He is friendly and gentle, and he loves to tell stories about his life and his time in the hotel. He is a great listener, and he always has a kind word to say to me when I am feeling down. I remember one time when I was feeling particularly stressed and overwhelmed, and he came to me and offered to help. He suggested that we go for a walk in the hotel's gardens, and he told me stories about the history of the hotel and the people who had lived there. It was a great distraction, and it helped me to clear my head and relax. But my favorite guest of all is a shapeshifter who can take on any form that she desires. She loves to play dress up, and she often comes to the front desk in the guise of famous celebrities or historical figures. She is always full of surprises, and I never know who or what I will be talking to when she arrives. I remember one time when she came to the front desk in the form of a beautiful princess, and she asked me to help her find her lost tiara. I was skeptical at first, but she was so convincing that I couldn't help but believe her. We searched all over the hotel, and we eventually found the tiara hidden in one of the guest rooms. It was a fun and exciting adventure, and I was glad that I could help her. I am grateful for the opportunity to interact with such fascinating and unique guests. They make my job exciting and rewarding, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I talk confidently now, and that's because of experience. Once you really get a hang of this place, it starts becoming easy not to get caught out. But there have been a number of close encounters. One particular night, as I was making my rounds, I heard a faint whimpering sound coming from one of the rooms. I followed the sound and soon I came across a small child sitting on the floor. She looked up at me with big, innocent-looking eyes, and asked me for help. I was immediately drawn to the child, feeling a surge of compassion and protectiveness. I asked her what was wrong, and she told me that she was lost. She said that she had wandered away from her parents, and that she didn't know how to find them. I felt pity for the child, and I decided to help her. I asked her if she knew what room she was staying in, but she shook her head. She said that she didn't remember, and that she was scared. A wave of unease washed over me. Something about the child didn't seem right. She was too calm and collected for a lost child. Her eyes seemed to be glowing faintly, and she moved in a strange way, almost drifting, rather than walking. But despite my misgivings, I couldn't bring myself to abandon her. After all, you couldn't judge people here on their appearance. I decided to take the child to find reception where we could look up her parents' information and help her find her way back to them. But as soon as we reached the hallway, I realized that something was very wrong. The child was attached to a long, slender tail, 
like the kind used by anglerfish. It was clear that the child was just a bait used to lure unsuspecting victims. I can never explain how, but this was all hidden from me until the last moment. I was frozen in shock, unable to move or speak. The creature lunged at me, its sharp teeth bared. But at the last second, I managed to snap out of my trance and dodge its attack. I ran out of the hallway and slammed the door shut behind me, locking it from the outside. I knew that I had to get away from it, but the creature was blocking the only exit back to the stairs. I looked around frantically, trying to find a way out. But the corridor I was in was small and cramped, and there were no windows or other doors. I was trapped in a dead end, and the creature was getting closer and closer. Its claws were scratching at the door, trying to break through. It seemed it couldn't open doors, and the child Laura figure might not have had the motor function for something so nuanced. A small break for me, though the splintering wood told me that my lucky break wouldn't last long. I could hear its sharp teeth gnashing and its breath rasping in the air. Filled with terror, and I didn't know what to do. I was about to give up and face my fate, when I spotted a small vent in the ceiling. It was too small for the creature to fit through, but I was slim enough to squeeze in. I grabbed a nearby table that held a few small decorations, and stood on it, trying to reach the vent. The creature was almost at the door, and I could hear its claws staring at the wood. I had to act fast. I managed to unlatch the vent and push it open, and I scrambled up into the air duct. I could hear the creature bashing at the door, and its shrieks were louder and more frenzied than ever. I knew that it was angry and frustrated that it couldn't get to me. I crawled through the air duct as fast as I could trying to put as much distance between me and the creature as possible. I didn't know where I was going, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get away from that terrifying monster. After what felt like hours, I finally emerged from the air duct and collapsed onto the floor of the reception. I was exhausted and terrified, but I was also relieved that I had survived. I knew that I had to be more careful in the future, and to always be on my guard regardless of appearances. But despite the danger, I couldn't help but feel a small thrill of excitement at the thought of encountering more of these otherworldly creatures. Though I hoped it'd be less close for comfort. Speaking of, the reception area of the hotel is a strange and fascinating place. It is the first thing that guests see when they arrive, and it is the hub of activity in the hotel. But despite its busy and bustling atmosphere, the reception area is also a surprisingly safe and peaceful place. I have noticed that the more aggressive and dangerous guests tend to avoid the reception area. They seem to sense that it is a place of calm and tranquility, and they prefer to stay in their own rooms or roam the halls. This means that the reception area is a relatively safe space for the staff, and we can relax and unwind there without fear of being attacked. But despite the relative safety of the reception area, we can't stay there all night. There are many mandatory tasks and duties that we have to perform, and these take us out of the safety of the reception area and into the more dangerous parts of the hotel. For example, we have to inspect the rooms and make sure that they are ready for the next guests. This means that we have to go into the rooms and look for oddities, and this can be a risky business. Some of the rooms are inhabited by aggressive or dangerous guests, and we have to be careful not to disturb them or provoke them in any way. We also have to deal with the guests' possessions. Many of the supernatural guests have items that are too powerful or dangerous to be left unguarded. Desired items that other guests might pinch for mischief, or worse. It is our job to make sure that these items are stored safely, and that they are not misused or stolen. This can be a challenging and dangerous task, especially when the guests are unpredictable or volatile. As a hotel clerk, I have a variety of tasks and responsibilities that I must perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of these tasks are routine and mundane, while others are more challenging and exciting. Here are some examples of the tasks that I have to perform. X200B Check guests in and out this is perhaps the most important and essential task that I have to perform. I have to greet guests when they arrive, and I have to make sure that they have everything they need. I also have to collect payment, and I have to make sure that the guests are satisfied with their rooms. X200B Do laps around the hotel Another important task that I have to perform is to do regular laps around the hotel. This involves walking around the hotel and looking for any oddities or anomalies that might need to be dealt with. I have to be alert and vigilant and I have to report any issues or problems to my manager. X200B Deal with guests' requests and complaints as a hotel clerk, I am the first point of contact for guests who have requests or complaints. I have to listen to their concerns and try to resolve any issues that they might have. This can be challenging, as some guests can be demanding or difficult to deal with. 
X200B. Handle requests for food and drink One of the more challenging tasks that I have to perform is dealing with requests for food and drink. Some of the guests have very strange and unusual tastes, and they often request food and drink that is difficult to find or prepare. Fortunately, our chefs are incredibly skilled, and they seem to be able to make any order, no matter how insane. X200B Handle emergencies and security issues in addition to dealing with routine tasks, I also have to be prepared to handle emergencies and security issues. In a normal setting, this would be dealing with medical emergencies, fires, or other disasters. But for me I mainly have to make sure that the hotel is secure and that the guests are safe. X200B Work with other staff members as a hotel clerk, I am part of a team, and I have to work closely with other staff members. This includes working with the cleaners, the maintenance staff, and other clerks. We have to coordinate our efforts and make sure that the hotel is running smoothly and efficiently, while minimizing loss. X200B Deal with the most difficult guests A challenging aspect of my job is dealing with the most difficult guests. These can be guests who are demanding, rude, or uncooperative, and they can be a real handful. But with this job, it could really be the widest variety of dangers, examples of which I've already mentioned. X200B Report everything to management as part of my job, I have to report everything that happens on shift to the management group. They have provided us with an archaic system for doing this, and I have to make sure that I use it correctly and accurately. This can be a time-consuming and tedious task, but it is an important part of my job. X200B Keep the hotel running smoothly Ultimately, my goal as a hotel clerk is to keep the hotel running smoothly and efficiently. This means that I have to make sure that everything is in order, and that all of the guests are happy and satisfied. I have very little interaction with the mysterious group we staff know as management. This group seems to be in charge of the hotel, but I have never actually seen any of its members in person. Instead, they communicate with us through messages that are sent through the archaic systems they have provided. These messages are often vague and cryptic, and they can be difficult to decipher. They usually tell us what we need to do for the day or week, but they never provide much in the way of explanations or details. This can be frustrating as it makes it difficult for us to understand what is truly expected of us, or the dangers we'll face during that shift. Despite this, we have to follow the instructions to the letter. We have no choice but to do as we are told, and to trust that they know what they are doing. It is an unsettling feeling, to be working for a group that we know so little about. Sometimes, this makes me wonder what the real purpose of the hotel is, and what role we play in it. I wonder if management has some ulterior motive or if they are just a group of eccentric and supernatural individuals. I don't know the answers to these questions, but I do know that I am grateful for the job that they have given me. Though I really shouldn't be sharing anything at all about this place, the information I've provided puts no one at risk, so it's kind of a gray area. But there are some things I can't talk about. I have access to many secrets and hidden knowledge unknown to the modern world. One of the most intriguing things I will share though is that I have come across a failsafe that is hidden away in the depths of the hotel. I have never seen it used, and I don't even know what it does. But I have read that it is only to be used in the most dire of circumstances. The failsafe is a small, unremarkable looking device that is hidden in a secret compartment in the hotel's basement. I have been instructed to never touch it, and to never tell anyone about it. But despite the warnings, I can't help but be curious about it. I have no idea what the failsafe is for, or what it does. I have heard rumors that it can activate some kind of security system, or that it can seal off the hotel from the outside world, or that it takes the hotel away someplace far off, maybe even off world. But I have no way of knowing for sure, and the management is tight lipped about it. Despite my curiosity, I have never been tempted to use the failsafe. I know that it is only to be used in the most dire of situations, and I have never faced a situation that warrants its use. But I can't help but wonder what would happen if I ever did have to use it. I may never know what the consequences of using the failsafe would be, nor do I know if I'll be able to share it if I do. It could be the key to saving the hotel and its guests, or even the world if something so catastrophic were to emerge from this place, or it could unleash something terrible and unimaginable. I can only hope that I never have to find out. Every month, our hotel undergoes a strange and unusual inspection. The inspector arrives without warning, and he spends hours scrutinizing every inch of the hotel. He checks the most mundane and seemingly insignificant things, and he takes copious notes on everything that he sees. 
At first, I thought that the inspector was just a normal, if somewhat eccentric, secret government official. But as I got to know him better, I realized that there was something very strange and otherworldly about him. He seemed to have an almost supernatural awareness of the hotel, and he was able to detect things that no one else could. One of the things the inspector checks is the quality of the air in the hotel. He takes samples of the air in each room, and he analyzes them. He says that the air quality is critical for the health and well-being of the guests, but I have no idea why. But get this, he doesn't use a single device for this. He simply raises his finger, waits, and notes down the results. The inspector also checks the water quality in the hotel. He takes samples from the taps and the pools, and he tests them for impurities and contaminants. He says that the water must be pure and clean, but again, I have no idea why. And again, the measuring device for all these samples are entirely done with the tip of his index. But the strangest thing that the inspector checks is the hotel's electrical system. He spends hours examining every wire and circuit, and he tests the flow of electricity throughout the hotel. He says that the electrical system is crucial for the operation of the hotel, but I have no idea what he means by that. This test is done by him biting down on certain wires plumbed outside the walls connected to certain loops. All of the results are given to me to note down on the system. They are numbers specific to such a detailed degree that I wonder how he gets all that from just his fingers and teeth. Despite being given the information, and seeing the variances in the results from month to month, I have never been told or seen anything that correlates to them. All I know is that they're important. Despite my confusion and curiosity, I have learned not to question the inspector's methods. He is a strange and enigmatic figure, and he seems to have a deep understanding of the hotel and its workings, which I blindly trust is in everyone's best interest. I can only hope that his inspections help to keep the hotel running smoothly and safely. Overall, I have decided to keep working here. The pay is good, and I enjoy interacting with the guests for the most part. Plus, I have learned a lot about the hidden workings of the hotel, and I have access to many secrets and knowledge that most people don't have. I know that I will face many more dangers in the future, but I am ready for them. I have faced the worst that the hotel has to offer so far, and I have survived. I am stronger and wiser than I was before, and I am ready for whatever comes my way. I will stay here, and I will do my best to protect the guests and the staff. I will continue to learn and grow, and I will use my knowledge and skills to keep the hotel running as smoothly and safely as possible. I know that it won't be easy, but I am determined to do my part to make the hotel a success. I am proud to be a hotel clerk at the hotel with strange guests, and I am grateful for the opportunity. It may be perilous, but it is also fascinating and exciting. I will do my best to make the hotel a safe and happy place for all of its guests.